Welcome to another video. Today uh, we're looking at the JVC KDA3 stereo cassette deck from 1979. But this sounds great and it's in great shape and what I really like about this deck are these great looking analog VU meters. What is that? Max and 1-2 thing. Uh, max 1-2. That's the output level. But anyway, the, the reason I got this is I really like the look of it and it just seemed like a really solid deck. Um, Look at that automatic input select. Yeah, the uh, it's also got a lot of features which we'll talk about. So here's an ad from this from 1979 and you can get a free t-shirt and a free tape with this ad. And really um, this deck came out in 1979 and at that time there's a lot of competition. It's kind of the... It, people, there's a shirt. Yeah, a technical knockout. So there, people are paying attention to... Uh, sound quality specs and features it really shows in this product now here's another ad <laughs> this ad seems to be making fun of the older style of tape deck it says when you bought it which means the deck you already own um, uh, tape uh, cassettes cost a buck and noise reduction meant turning it down so again they're trying to promote all the features they've got inclu including these noise reduction features making, there's a red square that's ours yeah that is that you're right that's the one with the red square that's this one that's the uh, kda3 sitting there on top and it's probably the cheapest of these three models here in this ad because the other two have uh, full logic controls. One feature heavily touted with this uh, sticker and in the manual is the metal tape capability. Now, uh, this tape deck doesn't recognize the tabs that you normally find in the top of these tapes to set these switches, so you have to use these switches to set it manually. Interestingly, when I was buying tapes when I was in high school, Ooh. I basically had a couple of choices. I had normal, high bias, and metal, but this tape deck also handles but what's Dad, called a Type I thought, 3. I thought, um, like... Back in 1990, they're like $1,000 or something. No, no, no. And you can tell this tape deck is during the early part of metal because uh, it's even got a metal adjustment on the back. According to the manual, this this adjustment of the bias allows you it to be to uh, work with uh, different tapes. And, um, and What's that C SA symbol? The SA symbol uh, stands for... Uh, what does that stand for? It's a, <laughs> Let's ask Google. Well, we know that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. The... The SA symbol uh, stands for um, Sin Alloy, which is a spe special tape head meant to get better quality. What What's that think? red thing? I guess that's just like a cutaway view is what that is. It's not a three head deck, so it's not the most expensive tape deck, but it does have a lot of nice quality touches like this, and these heads are in great shape. Another feature this thing has is called ANRS. You know what that stands for? You can put it in super mode. Uh, that's the Superman! Not Superman. That's automatic noise reduction system. And so they came out in the, in the mid 70s with a ANRS which was similar to Dolby B. And then with this one has super- We have Dolby um, sound on our computer. Yes, um, well, Dolby as we know won the noise reduction uh, wars, but back in the 70s, you know, they're trying to get that hiss out of the tape. And you had DBX and things like this, ANRS. And ANRS, uh, the original ANRS was- they, uh, Were they trying to figure out a way also to get rid of the hiss out of records? Well, yeah, they got rid of the hiss out of tapes. But anyway, ANRS, the first iteration was compatible with Dolby B according to some documentation. Does this have hisses? Well, we'll find out. It has a little bit of hiss. Um, you know, it's kind of like Dolby B and C. You've got ANRS and Super ANRS. Here are these cool VU meters. Look, they look all black. And then when you turn it on... Lights up! Yeah, it lights up. It's in color. They just look really great. And now what's interesting also about this tape deck, you know, in the 80s, everything went digital. And uh, this is still has analog, but it, it has these VU meters, but it also has peak level meters. So you got the VU meters and you got the peak level along the oh top. Oh my goodness. It's got both of them. It's uh, interesting how It's going to explode. Well, no, the, <laughs> peak, the peak level is level at that point. VU, I think it's more of an VU, average. VU, what does that stand for? Volume unit. But don't they look great? I mean, that's a, kind of a, a darker shot of them. But these things just really light it up. It has a black screen like that other one. Yeah, they, it, it looks really good. Uh, the front panel and cover is metal, and every button feels really good, not cheap. Even the screws have these little washers. It's really good quality uh, construction. The front is all metal, but the inside has this plastic uh, cage. And see that? Why? Little, well, uh, just because it's cheaper to make, I guess. But that that little tab there goes to this spot that was unpainted on the case to kind of ground the case. You need to redo that scene. It's blurry. Yeah. There's, Whoa. there's the inside. That's the backlight. And, and it you, has two floors. Yes, two floors. It's got a top floor with the power supply. Look at those capacitors. Area. Yeah, capacitors. The bottom floor has all the Does, audio Is circuits. one leaking? No, I don't think so. It looks pretty good. Notice the power wire routed neatly. There's the Super ANRS chips with their proprietary Dolby Noise Reduction System. 
cool. And, uh, you know, the look at the way it opens and closes. It's not a soft I see a light in there. Yeah. It's not a soft eject, but see that little lever that kind of rides it out? It just has a, Everything about this has a really good, solid feeling. There's a shot of the flywheel from the side. The belts in this thing were fine. And there's I saw the, a screw on the plastic, I think. It looks there, like you can check out the plastic. There's a motor. It's got the date on it of May 30th, 1979. Kind of confirming how old this thing is. But Another thing I can't show you in the YouTube video is the smell. It's the it smells of, like 70s. <laughs> it smells like the 70s. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like a burnt kind of smell of circuit boards. Not all circuit boards have it, but this, uh, like certain types of radios, maybe uh, it just has that smell about it uh, when you <laughs> the open it. The smell of the 70s. Yeah, the smell of the 70s, maybe. All right, so anyway, so uh, now we're going to do a couple of demos. Guess what we're, we're, what, guess what we're using to record this video? Well, that's a surprise. We're using the tape deck. So, uh, this hey, is you just got rid of the surprise. All right, hang on. The entire voiceover was recorded on a high bias tape with the Super ANRS system engaged. So we've been recording on like an old Maxell XL2 tape from the 90s I had lying around. How, what do they use to record YouTube videos now, like? Well, we probably get a USB microphone or something. Or like a recorder from a, tel a phone, a cell anyway, phone. But anyway, we hope you enjoyed the short video. This uh, I think we're really gonna enjoy playing around with this tape deck. And uh, uh, we're gonna play you just a couple of different uh, Songs. Examples. Yeah, a couple of different songs, some uh, royalty-free YouTube songs and maybe some other demos. See you next time for another video.